In a recent video, I talked about shoulder dislocations and how they can lead to shoulder instability. I want to follow up on that video by talking about the two types of shoulder instability and what you can potentially do about it in this video. I'm Dr. David, orthopedic surgeon, sports medicine specialist, and author of That's Gotta Hurt, The Injuries That Change Sports Forever. And I provide education, information, and commentary on all sorts of sports and exercise injuries and injury treatments and injury prevention for athletes and active people so that you can stay healthy and perform your best. In that video, I talked about how traumatic shoulder dislocations, where the ball pops out of the socket, but can become a recurrent problem where it pulls the labrum off the socket or the glenoid and stretches out the capsule. And so very often, especially in young active people or athletes, a lot of times we'll fix it surgically. Sometimes after the first dislocation, it's an arthroscopic surgery, it takes about an hour, maybe half an hour to do the surgery, but it's a long recovery. But the success rates of that are very good. That's what we call traumatic instability of the shoulder. And again, there are lots of things you can do as I talk about in that video on shoulder dislocations. There's a lot of things you can do in terms of wearing a sling and physical therapy, but a lot of those traumatic instability events, a lot of those patients end up needing surgical stabilization. Another type of shoulder instability is what we call multi-directional instability, where there's not necessarily the ball all of a sudden popping out of place, but it's sort of a microscopic or, or subtle instability. The young athlete may not even really complain that it's popping out of place as much as she complains that it's a dull, achy soreness. Very often, it's a female athlete. In my experience, much more common in the girls than in the boys and a lot of times they'll have loose joints or they're ligamentously lax so they can pull their thumb and touch their forearm or they can hyperextend their elbows those are good signs of that potential issue and again it's it's subtle it's it's dull achy pain with repetitive motions in things like swimming and volleyball and gymnastics and cheerleading Fortunately, most of those patients don't need surgery. A good course of physical therapy for shoulder strengthening, rotator cuff strengthening, strengthening the muscles around the shoulder blade can be very, very helpful. Occasionally though, some of those patients still struggle and can benefit from physical therapy as well, where you tighten the capsule all around the shoulder to eliminate the, the motion and helpfully in, uh, improve their pain. All right, have you dealt with shoulder instability, either multi-directional or traumatic, and what did you do about it? Did physical therapy work? Did you have surgery? I'd love to hear your experience, and I bet viewers all over the place would love to hear it as well, because they may be dealing with this. So below this video, share your comments, your thoughts, your experience, so we can all learn from that experience. If you like videos like this and you want more information on sports and exercise injuries and injury treatments and injury prevention, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click the subscribe button in the upper right corner of this page. I record three videos every week. Plus, I've started doing live videos where I answer some of your questions. So you'll get notifications about those videos if you subscribe to my video channel. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this was helpful and I look forward to seeing you right here next time.